morning, morning, morning. Jesus is on, he's on the main line. Tell him what you wanna. Oh, Jesus is on, he's on the main line. Somebody tell him what you want. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on, he's on the main line. Why don't you tell him what? you want or you just call him up and tell him what you want Jesus is on he's on the main line tell him what you want oh Jesus is on he's on the main line somebody tell him what you want Oh, uh, Jesus, Jesus is on. on. He's on the, the main line. Why don't you tell, tell him what you want? Or you just call him up and, and tell him, him what you want. Now if you want more power, you ought to tell him what you want. Oh. If you want more power, somebody tell him what you want. Tell him what you want. Oh, if you want more power, somebody somebody tell him what you want. Are you just calling up and tell him what? Jesus is on, he's on the main line, tell him what you want, oh, oh, Jesus is on, he's on the main line, somebody tell him what you want, tell him what you want now, Jesus is on, he's on the main line, somebody tell him what you want or you just call him up and tell him what you want now if you're sick and you can't get well tell him what you want oh if you're sick and you can't get well somebody tell him what you tell him what you my want God now. now if you're sick and you can't get well somebody tell him what you want or you just call him up and tell him what you want if you want your soul saved tell him what you want Oh, if you want your soul saved, somebody tell him what you want. Tell him what you oh, want. Oh, if you want your soul saved, why don't you tell him what you want? Or you just, just call him up? And tell him what you want. Call Jesus. Somebody call. Call Jesus. Somebody tell him what you want. Oh, call Jesus. Why don't you call Jesus? Why don't you tell him what you want? Tell him what you want. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Why don't you tell him what you want? Are you just call him up and tell him what you want? Jesus is on the main line. Why don't you tell him what you want? Oh, Jesus is on. He's on. The main line. Why don't you tell him what you tell want? Tell him what you oh, want. Oh, Jesus is on. He's on the, the main line. Somebody tell him what 
you want? Are you just call him up and tell him what you want? Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'll read in 2 Samuel, verses 9 and 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness of Jonah's sake? Here is God's word. Tis the old ship of Zion. Tis the old Ship of Zion. Kneel the Father. Come in this morning, in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to first forgive us all our many sins. Ship of Zion. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to come into your house. Thank you, Lord, for the Sunday school today, Lord. We ask you to touch the the teacher this morning. So I need to make sure you come loud and clear from them what you want us to hear. Bless the Lord that you bless your word today, Lord. Go within our hearts, Lord, within our souls. Yes, Lord, that you let's go by the sick and shut in. Touch you in a special way, Lord. One that's sick, one that's have illness, Lord. Touch the one that's free with the loss of a love, Lord. Lord, we just say thank you for all you're doing, all you have done in our lives, Lord. Thank you for shelter and food on our tables, Lord. Get on board. Lord, do this this time of the year, Lord. You open our minds, Lord. Open our hearts, Lord. And that we will help those that are less fortunate than we are, Lord. The ones that don't have, that we will share with them so that they will have. Lord, it's not about how many, how many prayers we can buy, how much money we spend. Oh, celebrate the birth of your son, Lord. That you said, you say, Lord, Lord, for that we honor the name. Thankful, Lord. Dear Lord, we just give you all the honor, give you all the praise. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Get up, boy. Get up. Superintendent. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Amen. 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 We'll now have a warm, brief introduction before our morning man as our pastor comes. Come on, give him a hand of praise. Come on. Come Amen. On. Amen. 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 To God be the glory for the things he has done. He has done great things yes, for us. And we all can say hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Welcome, good morning to you on Facebook, you that are on conference call. Thank you for affording us this opportunity to share a word with you from our morning manna. Our teacher is going to come and share with us about the mercy of justice. And I'm, I'm mighty grateful to know that God always reaches back for those that he can be a blessing to. Other than that, none of us would be saved even on today. Don't deserve it, but thank God, God still reaches out in mercy. Our morning manner will be taught today by Reverend Garrett our Sunday school for our children and our Sunday school for our youth uh, will begin at 10 o'clock and those call numbers are on the screen. We invite you to wake your children up, stir your youth, let them know that the word of God will be beneficial to their lives. Bless them, it will be, it will be a blessing to them, but they need to be awake to take part in it. Our teachers have studied, and they put the time in, but if there's no one there to teach, it's, you, you, you know, we're waiting on them. Amen? Amen? God bless you, and may God keep you. And if you'd be so kind, visit our website and be a blessing to this ministry, planting a seed 
into this fruitful harvest. Stay with us throughout the morning, 1045. We will begin our morning worship. And we challenge and invite each of you to let this day be the greatest day of your life. Let this day be the day that you commit yourself to Christ Jesus or you will draw closer to the Lord himself. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. Don't waste it. Don't miss it. You don't want to miss this opportunity. Now, hear our morning manna come. Teacher come in the person of Reverend Cedric Garrett. Give him a big hand. Morning, Sunday school. Morning. Certainly to our pastor, to our assistant superintendent, to the preachers, Reverend Huntley, Reverend Dominique, uh, to, our, to all the deacons. God is good, isn't he? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We're going to be looking at our Sunday school lesson this morning, coming out of 2 Samuel. Is that the right one? Yes, sir. Amen. <clears throat> Coming out of 2 Samuel, the mercy of justice. The mercy of justice. Amen. Great passage of scripture, great lesson this morning. We look at a king this morning out of 2 Samuel and the extent of a king. This lesson uh, really shows us the true meaning and the acts of mercy and justice this morning. Amen. Amen. When we look at this lesson, we see the true acts of mercy and justice. Um, and this is, of course, portrayed through the life and the legacy of David. Uh, specifically King David. Now that's important this morning. He's not just David in this lesson. He's King David that has significance in the lesson. Um, you know, David reigned over uh, the territory of Judah and then eventually reigns over the entire nation of Israel. So in this lesson, he's more than just David. He's King David because it's going to show us even with all of his power and his position, the extent that David goes through or shows us uh, through his life and his legacy, legacy, how far the mercy of justice, justice needs to go, Amen. all right? Um, and then 2 Samuel in itself, it provides a biography of David's background. So when we look at 2 Samuel, we'll look at and we find David's background, uh, even starting with 1 Samuel, uh, which we pick up, and we pick up where David begins. Um, and David, we know this morning, Sunday school, that David is the successor of Saul. Uh, Israel's, Israel's first king, Saul was the first king. But really, David was the best king. Um, and, and he is the most successful king in Israel's history, All right? right? Uh, this lesson allows us, again, uh, to see the level and latitude of David's kindness and his integrity, right? He has a level and latitude of kindness in this lesson. Uh, and we see that David has no restrictions, right? When it comes to what he does in this lesson, there is zero restriction. There is no limitations to how far he goes question this morning is, when we're dealing with justice and mercy, what's our limitation? How far will we go? Do we, do we go far enough until they make us upset? Until they tick us off? Until they've asked for too much money? Until they borrowed enough money several times? How far do we go? And so, again, we see the level uh, of David's kindness and the latitude of his kindness. Now, the lesson aim in our Sunday school book it says, to show that David determined to keep his promise to Jonathan. It's important, right? He promises to keep uh, his promise to Jonathan. 
Saul's son, by showing kindness to members of Saul's household, Jonathan's son, uh, Mephibosheth, and Micah, a Micah, right? These are the grandsons, the sons, and we see David going, again, way beyond. Here's the life aim. Here's the aim for us in life, to show that it is a great thing to keep one's promise or one's word and to do so by honoring and showing kindness to those who have been there for you during difficult times. Yeah. That is our aim this morning. Um, now, here's the formula for love in this class. The formula for, for love, David shows us, he asked, he investigated, and he pursued. That's the formula that he uses. He asked, he pursued, he investigated. Uh, David in one through five, let's look at it, uh, chapter nine. David's covenant and connection with Jonathan. Verse one says, let's read it together, class. And David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show for Jonathan's sake? Wow. David asked. He says, is there anybody left? Now, I know Jonathan's dead and gone, but my word was to Jonathan. And he goes, again, here's the formula that he does to build this love thing. He asked and he investigated and he pursued, David asked, that I may show him kindness. Not just talk about it, but David says, I want to be about it. Uh -huh. David, watch this, chooses not to partake or take part in generational ha hatred. He chooses not to, if David wanted to, he could have let, he could have said, you know, that was to, the promise was to Jonathan. He's gone. I don't have to do anything. Right? In fact, uh, I could continue this thing on, this generational thing that the dad is gone. I'm going to hate the grandson, the great grandson. You know, we got people that sit in church this, uh, across the country. And you got four or five generations sitting in church hating another family or someone, and they don't even know why. Everybody that was involved is dead and gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet, well, why don't you sit on this side of the church? Because my mama got mad. She didn't sit on that side of the church. Because she was mad at, but David, watch this. Is somebody say it's a choice. It's a choice. David pursued, it was a choice to pursue this, right? And he wants to show him, and he says it. There's no secret about it. He shows him kindness. He says, I want to do more than talk about it. I want to do something about it. Right? How do people know you love them and you're reaching and you're forgiving? By doing something. I mean, talk, everybody can talk. You know, you know, if you need something, let me know. But what are you doing? Are y'all with me? David chooses of the household, and watch what he says, verse 1. At the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. It is no secret that David and Saul didn't have the best relationship. But David, watch, watch how he builds this thing. Historically, David really, he has already forgiven Saul. But when you read uh, 1 Samuel, you'll see the history of Jonathan and David form. In fact, the Bible says they had um, linked up souls. They had made a covenant between each other in 1 Samuel, I believe it is. Right. They had made um, a, a, a covenant between each other, between their souls, that whatever happened, that, that they were going to honor being friends. Right. They decided not to let their parents mess them up. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> they decided, well, just because my mama mad with you don't mean I need to be mad with you. Right. Uh-oh. Right. Why? Because... He was a man of his word. But more importantly, David honor God. Lord Jesus. When we go back, David is just not haphazardly pulling off this thing of pursuing. 
David has or has to have some kind of relationship with God to do this. Amen. Remember, he's what? King David. He is King David. Come on, let's read verse 2. Let's get some more context. Verse 2 says, and there was... And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he says, Thy servant is he. Here is Ziba. He is still part of the house. Uh -huh. He's still part of Saul's household or servants. Mm -hmm. And David, as he inquires, wouldn't you know it, there's somebody that says, Yep, yeah, I'm still a part of the house. And the information that you're looking for, David, yeah, there is somebody there. there so, so God always, watch this, don't ever give up on the situation because God always leaves a remnant in the bush. Yeah. He always, watch this, you know, we'll make excuses why we don't want to forgive and love. God would always give us an opportunity to get it right. And remember, David pursued it. It didn't come after David. David went after it. Right, right, right. Things will not change until we go after it. Right, right. All right. Thank you, Lord. David could have left this thing alone. He could have said, my friend is dead. His daddy treated me bad. He's gone. Why would I honor this thing? Mm -hmm. Well, I believe when you look at the historical background of David's life that he honors God. And I got to believe, uh, okay, when we make a covenant, does it ever come to your mind that we promise God and we, we promise somebody something? But does, does it ever come up in your mind that what, what, what is God uh, has to say about it? Right? You know, we know what the right thing to do, but do we ever process how does God want me to handle this thing? How does God want me to pursue this thing? He wants us to pursue justice. You know, we want everybody to give us justice, but we don't want to give out justice. Amen. We want everybody to give us, make every wrong right. But what about us pursuing? Right. Right. Sharon, Sharon a couple weeks ago with somebody said, well, I didn't do this and I do that. And I said, well, sometimes forgiveness is not the person that actually did it, but forgiveness is sometimes the person who was involved. And it's up to us sometime to go pursue it, even though you were not the initiator. Yes, sir. Let's go. Mm -hmm. right. Verse 2. He was at the house of Saul, called unto David. David said unto him, Art thy ziba? And he says, Thy servant is. Let's read verse 3. And the king said, verse 3, Is there not yet any of the household of Saul that I may show the kindness, watch that, of who? Of God. Of God unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame. He says, watch what David says. The reason I'm doing what I did, I am not, watch this, I'm not showing him how kind I can be. I'm showing him the kindness of God. In other words, David says, I have the resources and the means to be kind, but the only reason I'm doing what I'm doing because of the God I serve. I want to show him the kindness. Now, that's important down the road when we get down and start talking about David, you know, has the heart of God. It's important that he says, I'm showing him the kindness of God. What? You mean God would want me to do this? Yes. I am showing it. And he says, the guy that, that, that's still around is Jonathan's son. Right? His son, Mephibosheth, we know, uh, we've read and heard about this guy before sitting at the table, but we know he was lame. He was lame from five years old because the nurse dropped him. Right? So a uh, couple of things play, come into play here. Right? He, uh, down the road, we'll talk about it, he cannot even take the throne because he's lame. Right. 
right? But he is lame from five years old. Nurse dropped him while they were running in battle, right? Jonathan and Saul both died in the same battle. The daddy and Saul both died in the same battle. And David takes upon his responsibility to say, I'm going to honor the conversation. I'm going to honor the commitment. I'm going to honor the uh, covenant. And I found, watch this, the grandson. Amen. I found, wait a minute, somebody said, yeah, that's one. He may not be paid attention to because he's, he's lame. But somebody, again, God has somebody that knows somebody that introduces somebody. I wish I would see God in this thing. Somebody that has somebody that knows somebody that introduces somebody. Verse 4. And the king said unto him, verse 4, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he is in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel in Lodibar. Right? Where is he? He's pursuing it. He asked. He investigated. Now, remember, David is not working from a platform of forgiveness. He's done that a long time ago. He's working from a platform of friendship and fellowship, right. right? When David is doing this, he got nothing in his heart but love. Forgiveness happened a long time ago. When Saul was chasing him, now remember, Jonathan also helped David. When you read the background, uh, Jonathan kept protecting David from his dad. Right. Every time Saul wanted to get at David, Jonathan, as his friend, will somehow warn off his daddy Saul. He was the, watch this, he was the in-between. So part of justice is sometimes standing in between. Sometimes if you ain't got this, you can stand there and do this. So this goes way back. So can you see how it plays on David? David says, I owe God, but I owe him something. Wait a minute. They both dead and gone, but I still owe him something. How much do we honor what we say we're going to do? No limitations. This man could have stopped when Jonathan was in the ground. But he did not do that. He continues to go on, and he does not, again, participate in what we like to participate in is generational hatred. He said, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. And remember, he's King David. He's got authority to do whatever he wants to do. But David says, no, no, no. I can, rem I can see David saying, I can remember my own childhood. Probably think about when I was just a shepherd boy. Mm -hmm. Watch the text. He says, and the king said, where is he? And he says, he's a son of Amiel in Lodibar. Right? Let's read one more. Verse 5. <laughs> Then the king David sent, and watch what he does. He's still in action form. And fetched him out of the, out of the house of Meker, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. He searches. Is there, and he asks, is there somebody? Who is it? Is there not any? Is there cousins? Are there uncles? Are there aunts? Is there any more bloodline? David is saying, where is it? There is no limitation. How will I extend the kindness of God? He doesn't just extend an olive branch. He, he's he putting out the whole forest. Right. You know, olive branch just says, I'm doing what I can, just a little bit, and then I've done my part. No. David says, I'm going beyond that. Yes, sir. And that's what God is really calling us to do, brothers and sisters, in justice. He's calling us to go beyond the standard. He's calling us to go beyond the norm. He's calling us to go where it has an impact on our life. Right, right. Verse 5, then David sent and fetched him. 
Where is he? David is really asking. I've heard that somebody, and the text says he pursued him. David sought after love. When you are seeking to love, it should be an inconvenience. Lord Jesus, let me try one more time. When you're seeking love, class, it should inconvenience us. It, it should make us sometimes have to call in and say, I, gotta, I, gotta only, I can only work for four or five hours. I got to get this thing right. It, it sometimes says, I, I'm on the way to the bank. I got to do something. Try this side over here. It should inconvenience us. It should get us out of our normal cycle to chase down love, to get it right. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. I remember my mother used to always say, son, I can't go to heaven with hate in my heart. I just can't do it. Right? And we've got to pursue every wrong from us, we got to pursue right. Because at the end of the day, it's God that we are accountable to. That's what this lesson, God uses these characters in this lesson to teach us about how to pursue love and how to go beyond the limitations and go across borders. Come out of our comfort zone and go into a place of inconvenience, a place that we're not familiar with, and make a connection. David pursues it. And... He pursues it so much, it impacts his life. It impacts his life. And I think the lesson now jumps to what verse? Six. One through five. And then we go to six, right? Mm -hmm. That right, class? Yes. <clears throat> now, isn't it strange? Let me just notate this. Isn't it strange how God <clears throat> will use the very ones to try to destroy you to help develop you. Saul tried to kill David. Right. He tried his best to destroy David, but really in that effort, God is really developing David. Mm. He is really developing David to see where David's character is. Even God himself says, David is a man after my own heart. Yes. What did God really mean by David is after his own heart? Well. What God is really trying to say is, David is doing what God would have done. And what God is doing. He has the heart of God. David not only has the hand of God, but he has the heart of God. And that's the question. I'm doing, see, that's our pursuit. I'm doing what God would do. See, okay, let's make it personal then. God did that for us. He pursued us, even though we were enemies with him. He went beyond limitations, and he pursues. Why? Because he loved. And that's what we see in this lesson. David goes beyond the norm. Yes, sir. He pursues it. He goes after it. He didn't wait for it to come to him. He didn't wait for it to land in his lap by incident or accident. He says, I'm purposely chasing this. Let's read verse 6. Now, here's the meeting, right? David's pursued it. He's investigated. Here's the meeting. They found him. Him, now, Mephibosheth, they are meeting. Y'all remember a story similar to this when Joseph met his brother. Right. Joseph met his brothers, and some of the same scenarios start to unfold. Mm -hmm. Joseph was crying when he saw his brother, and he immediately forgave them. Watch this. Here it is. He finds this young man. He finds him. They take it to him, and the text says, Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, the first thing he do, that he does, he falls down. That makes sense to me because he's in front of the king. Right? And the first thing Mephibosheth is probably thinking, he knows the history between his daddy and the granddaddy. And he falls down, verse 6, and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold, thy 
servant. Now, when Mephibosheth answers, he's probably answering in fear. But David is calling and reaching, oh God, in love. You know, you know, sometimes we call people, we want them to know how tough we are. How bad we are. Matter of fact, we want them to bring up our history. How bad we were in the street and what we did in the street. Everybody know who you did. In fact, you're too old to do that now. So cut off bringing that up. He is saying, listen, I'm calling you because I'm on a mission from God, really. Daddy, watch this. Verse 6. Mephibosheth's daddy and granddaddy, dead and gone. Long gone. And remember, this is important because David reigns for 40 years. David reigns for 40 years. So it is, it is not unlikely that he's going to meet the grandson of his friend. He's going to meet the son of his friend and the grandson. And he falls down, and then we jump to verse 7, I believe, right? Y'all see the story on one? The mercy of justice. David doesn't bring up what has happened. He doesn't talk about what, how your daddy did me, your granddaddy did me. He doesn't bring none of that up. Now, if you're going to forgive folks and move the mercy and justice, stop bringing up what happened. And say, let's, let's, let's have a plan on what we're going to do going forward. First of all, it would please God. But then second of all, both of us can have peace at night now. It pleases God, but now I can sleep. I can stop worrying about this thing. Come on, let's read verse 7. David wants to make him comfortable. Not only does he go out and pursue him, but he wants to make him feel comfortable. First thing he tells him is, stop tripping. Yeah. That's what he said, verse 7. I'm using our language. Yeah. Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness, and done unto the Father's sake, and will restore. Watch the key word he uses here. Mm -hmm. And will what? Restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table, Continually, David had a couple options. He could have harbored hate and revenge. Uh -huh. That's option one. Option two, he could have killed him because Mephibosheth could have been a potential threat to the kingdom. Yeah, he could have. Right? He could have been a, a threat. See, when kings in that time, they would kill off heirs or put them in their place. And like, don't you move. If you think you're going to move, you think you're going to take over the kingdom because that was, that was prominent during that time. Right. So the king had a right to go kill him. Nobody could question him. I'm killing off in the connection so they, may, so they won't try to overthrow the government. Right. So that was David's second option. He could have killed him. Right? First option, he could have harbored hate. He could have hate and revenge. He could have killed him because of a potential uh, threat to the throne and the bloodline. You and I know better because when we read the Bible that God set David up on the throne that it was never going to be abdicated. Right, right. And we know he could not really take it because he was crippled. That was one requirement. You can't run a kingdom and you crippled. Amen. But here's what David does, class. He makes a choice. Somebody say he makes a choice. He makes a choice. Kindness is up to us to make a choice. He makes a choice Watch this, to bless him. Yes, Lord. Now, you got a choice this morning. You got a choice to burden people or to bless them. That's right. Or let, let me flip it on the other side. God had a choice to kill us or keep us. Y'all yes. <laughs> don't see it like that. God could have killed us last night. Yes, sir. In fact, he should have. Mm. But he didn't. Thank he you, Lord. made a choice to keep us. That's what David's really doing as the king. See, God is our king. David is the king. Did y'all do y'all see the, the Christ type in this story? David is king and he makes a choice to keep him and bless him. He says, I'm going to bless him. 
He's going to honor the covenant. Remember, in 1 Samuel, the Bible specifically says, him and Jonathan knit, K-N-I-T, knit souls. That means they, they were like this. They were going to not let anything break them. They were going to honor covenant. They had knit souls. And your kind is because your daddy, here's what David says, I'm going to bless you for a couple of reasons. David says, I'm going to bless you, uh, Mephibosheth, because me and your daddy go way back. I'm going to bless you because of that. And he says, not only I'm going to bless you, let me bless you with one more thing. I'm going to give you the, the land back. He says, watch what he says. Here's the key word, restore. Re means to do again. He says, I'm going to restore. Remember, when they're in battle, they lose land, and, and Saul's family no longer has an inheritance to the land. And he says, I'm going to do something that's out of the norm. I'm going to restore the land that your granddaddy lost. I'm going to give it back. What is he trying to tell Mephibosheth? Your days are getting better. Yes, sir. Your days are getting brighter because I'm choosing to bless you. He says, here, here's that. He says, I'm going to show you kindness because me and your daddy go way back. We go back with two brothers from a different mother going way back. And by the way, I'm going to give you your land back that was lost in battle. And, and one more thing, Mr. Chef, you'll never have to live in poverty again. That's what he's really saying. If, 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 we, if we look at it in our language, when he says, put your feet under my table, yeah. see, uh, especially in the South, when you go to people's house and you put your feet on the table, it means something. Yes, sir. It means something. People invite you in the house and say, you want a piece of cake? Even if you don't want none, say, yeah, I want some cake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they keep candy on the coffee table. You don't really eat candy, but yeah, son, would you like some candy? Yes, ma'am. Get a piece of cake. You want some ice cream to go with that? Yes, ma'am. And you know, then they cook four or five cakes for the week. Lemon cake, uh, chocolate cake. You know, they would have them, and they would have them on top of the freezer. You know, the little coffin freezers. And they ask, what type of cake you want, son? Anything you want to slice me, ma'am. Why? Because it, they were extending kindness. They were extended kindness. And yet, when you didn't want it, or you act like they would come back and tell you and say, well, what's wrong with them? Their nose stuck up. You know, David is saying, man, you'll eat forever. You'll never live in poverty again. And he says, watch this, your feet will be under my table. Not, not the secondary table at the king's palace where all the servants sit. Not over here where the peasants sit. But David says, you're going to have your feet under my table. Uh, yeah. That's what God is really trying to tell us this morning. One day we'll sit down and we'll sit down at the king's table yes, with our feet on this table. Even though we were lame, we'll sit down under the table. That's what David does. He goes beyond and he makes an effort. He makes a choice. He pursues it. Y'all with me? And then he says, I'm going to show you perpetual kindness as long as I live. Yeah. You ever made that kind of commitment to somebody? As long as I live, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Yeah. It takes effort. Mm -hmm. It takes us pursuing it. And sometimes, yes, it inconveniences us. But that's what it's supposed to do. If it come easy, then it probably ain't about nothing. If, it come, if it's that easy for you to, you know, do this and do that and say a few words, send a card, write a, you know, it probably really doesn't mean much. <laughs> you know, some of the best cards I had from my children growing up is the ones that they wrote in crayon. Amen. Amen. They didn't go spend $5, $7 yeah. at Walgreens. They were write in crayon saying, happy birthday, daddy, love you, daddy. Amen. I still have those in, in, in the debts. Well, David still honors the covenant, and he keeps that covenant between him and Jonathan in a desk. Because that meant something to him. And because it meant something to him, he wants it to mean something to Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. Y'all with me? Shows him kindness. Somebody say he showed him kindness. 
David is not only a forgiven blesser, but David is a future blesser. Come on, let's, let's read. What, where are we? Verse what? Verse 9. Y'all trying to hurry up and get to the end. Y'all said 9. Very, very, we, didn't, we didn't get 8. 8 is missing, but we're going to read it. Verse 8 says, And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog? I want to read that because of the context. He says, Why would you bless me? Sometimes the writer leaves out important scripture for the letter. Why would you bless me? I consider myself a dog. Not only a dog, but a dead one. And you know what David could have did? He could have said, yeah, you're right. You ain't worth nothing. Your daddy wasn't nothing. Your granddaddy wasn't nothing. Your family wasn't nothing. They all was a joke. But he didn't do that. He didn't even bring that up in his memory. He didn't even, uh, he didn't even put on airs when he walked up to him. Not, not, a, not according to the text. There was no indication that he had a threat on him. Praise Praise God. God. Look at God. David didn't walk up and got his terriers and all. And he says, I'm going to pursue it. Where is it? Don't fear. He says, fear not. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. Stop tripping. He probably was calling King David. David probably told him in his ear, just call me David. <laughs> Why? Because I want you to be comfortable. Because God is getting ready to bless you. Watch this. He says, I'm nothing but a dead dog as I'm, verse 9, come on, let's read it loud and clear, class. Then the king called. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given. Somebody say giving. Yes. Unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Everything that Saul had before he lost it, I've given it. I've given it. And we got enough to give and still have some. Amen. Yeah, we do. Amen. We got enough to give and have some to bless somebody. And he says, I've given it. And he's watched this class. When we're going to bless somebody, when we're going to be kind to somebody, we must be intentional. And we must be deliberate about what we're doing. Amen. Not by chance, but on purpose. Somebody say on purpose. Right. I'm going to bless somebody on purpose. I'm going to be deliberate about it. I'm going to be to a point that is intentional. I'm coming to get you. Hey, I need to Hey, can I speak to you for a moment? Amen. Not with everybody else, right? I'm going to talk to you. Amen. Hold on for a sec. Don't move. No, I can't be. No, I got something for you. I want to bless you. Because <laughs> God's been good to me. Because yes, God had made a way for me. See, David had to go back. Remember, David was a mess up. But he was after God's own heart. But God blessed him in his mess up to make up. And that's why you ought to bless somebody today because in our mess up, he gave us an opportunity to make up. David was that kind of guy. And even after this text, he goes on, he's going to sin. But he was after God's own heart. It means to be after God's heart is I'm going to do what God would do himself. That's what it means to bless somebody. Out of convenience. I don't have to, but I mean it. And when I do it, let me say, let me just drop this in there for free. When we do bless somebody, you ain't got to publicize it. You ain't got to publish it, call down to the hair. Look, I bless so-and-so. You ain't got to do that. God sees it. And then cut the string. Don't have no strings attached. You remember when I blessed you back in May? Somebody said, let it go. That's what true justice and mercy means. It means to move forward in the lenses of God. Do we ever see things the way God sees them? God says David's a man out of his own heart. He says David is really trying 
to do what God would do. Verse what? Let's read it loud and clear. We're done. Verse 10 says what? That was verse 10? Yes. Mm hmm. Verse 11, come on. David not only says it once, but he, 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 he repeats it. Right. Mephibosheth shall eat at my table. David, again, goes beyond extending the hand of God, and, and he extends the heart of God. No matter how much, David says, you'll always have a perpetual blessing in my house. Amen. You'll always eat, and I want them to go prepared for you. I want the servants to go get the land ready, get it back to where it needs to be, right, and give it so it will, watch this, produce fruit. Produce fruit. That it will produce fruit. That's why we're blessing people so down the road, even if we don't see it and we're dead and gone, it's producing fruit. Do you know not, not know that your blessing can bless generations four or five years down the road just because of what you did for their mom and daddy? Amen. Yes, sir. It also helps people teach people about kindness. You know, and God sometimes will have you to minister to the meanest people. People that treated you bad. Sometimes you got to go pray for people that hated you in the street. You got to go minister to them. Sometimes you got to go, I mean, even in church, you got to go deal with people that cut you off and talk to you, said you weren't going to be no good deacon, said you can't preach and all of that kind of stuff. And God will use you to minister to them. That's what justice is. He, he uses you that you can be, watch this, a conduit, a blessed sword. He sends blessings through you so you can get blessings to them. Now, when God no longer can get it to you, he'll cut you off and put somebody else in the gap. But I don't know about you this morning, but I want to be a blesser this morning. I want to bless somebody beyond measure. Amen. And there's somebody for everybody to bless. That's what David is teaching us. We see in this lesson, and Mephibosheth, the grandson, is blessed, and his daddy and granddaddy are dead and gone. That's how God works. God is still bless you even from the grave. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's how God works. But you got to be willing. You want to pursue it. It needs to be intentional. It needs to be deliberate. And it must have purpose. God bless you this morning. Amen. Our God, our Father, we thank you for your kindness and your love. Yes. Thank you for your tender mercies. Yes. Pray now that we'll be better by your word. That we'll be not only hearers, but we'll be doers. We'll be so careful to give your name, praise the glory, and the honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. 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 Bless God.